Participating in this webinar will be our colleagues from the Health Resources and Services Administration, HRSA, Division of Nursing. Representatives from the HRSA Division of Grants Management Operations, representatives from the HRSA Contact Center, and representatives from REI Systems Incorporated. Agenda of the webinar. The webinar will focus on the topics listed on this overview slide. There is also an opportunity at the conclusion of the call of the webinar for you, the NAC participant, to ask questions via the chat functionality. Purpose, to prepare NAT applicants for the fiscal year 2012 application cycle. This webinar presentation will also prepare the HRSA Contact Center to provide adequate assistance to NAT applicants that may require help with completing, submitting their application. Legislative intent to provide financial support for students in nurse anesthetist programs. The grantee is the organization. The organization disperses the NAT funds to its eligible students. Program changes. Key change is that first year nurse anesthetist traineeship students are no longer supported under the Advanced Education Nursing Traineeship Program. The Nurse Anesthetist Traineeship Program will now support both first year and beyond 12 months of study NAT students. You may reference the additional program changes which are listed on this slide, slide number five and slide six. Additional key major changes. Revised NAT tables and new reporting requirements. DHPR performance measures. Please review slide 7 for information on the eligible students. Funding factors. There are two funding factors for the NAT program, statutory funding preference and special consideration. Statutory funding preference. Complete NAT table 2A and meet the requirements in the NAT funding opportunity announcement. Special consideration. Complete the special consideration assurance statement. Performance measures. There were two teleconference calls on the new performance measures earlier this year, and the calls were archived, so I hope everyone had an opportunity to participate or later listen to those informative calls. The calls were actually held in 2011 walkthrough of NAT program specific forms. I'll now hand the call over to Bradley Buckley from REI Systems Incorporated for the walkthrough presentation of the NAT program specific forms. Good afternoon. My name is Brad Buckley. I'm an Associate Customer Support Specialist with REI Systems, and I'm here today to provide you with insight to accessing and completing the program specific forms for the NAT application. Any users who wish to work on an NAT application must first register in the HRSA EHBs by going to the web address provided on this slide. There is no need to register twice in the system. If you are unsure if you have already created an account or cannot recall your login information, either the select the Forgot Your Password link below the login credentials or call the HRSA Contact Center for support. Once the NAT application is available in the HRSA EHBs, you can access it by logging in and selecting the View Applications link in the left side navigation menu. If you had received an email notification to upload the NAT application within the HRSA EHBs, yet no application is available on this screen, it could be due to two different reasons. Either A, your account is not associated to the correct organization. To verify this, click the My Registered Organizations link in the left side menu and review which organizations you have access to. Call or email the HRSA Contact Center if any support is needed on this or B, someone else with your organization has already taken ownership of the application and has not yet given you access to it. If the application does appear under the Grants.gov application status, then you can add it to your applications folder by clicking the Add Grants.gov application link. The first person with an organization to add the application to their View Applications folder 
becomes a designated application creator, also referred to as the application owner. The same person is then responsible for designating users within their organization access to the application. Therefore, it is imperative that whoever uploads the application for their organization is aware of this responsibility. To designate other users access to the application, this individual will need to use the peer access link, which you will see on the next slide. The three levels of peer access privileges are view application, edit application, and submit application to AO. The AO is the authorizing official who will submit the application to HRSA on behalf of the applicant organization. The AO is established in the general information section of the application within cover page 2, which you will see on slides 17 and 18. This slide is important for the application creator. The arrows are pointing to the peer access links that allow this user to give other users access to the application. These permissions can be updated at any time and can only be given to a user who has created a HRSA EHB's account. Note the application information displayed on the screen. If the AO name field is blank, it is because the AO for the applicant organization has not yet been identified within the application. Remember, this is done within the general information section of the application. The AO will be the individual responsible for submitting the NIT application to HRSA on behalf of your organization. The name beside the field created by is the name of the applicant owner who created the application within the HBs and is now responsible for authorizing access to the application for users with their organization. Depending on the access given to you by the creator of the application, you may or may not have all three options on the right side of the screen. This includes edit, delete, and submit options. Again, only the AO will be capable of submitting the completed NIT application to HRSA. Any other users who contribute to the application that have the submit capability will only be able to submit the application to the AO for final review before the AO submits the completed application to HRSA. By selecting the edit link, you can begin. The application data validation comments link on the application status page will display any discrepancies with the application from the grants.gov portion that now needs adjusted since being uploaded to the HRSA EHBs. Note the suggested next step under the status overview bar. This is always a good indication of what to do next to work on completing your NIT application. The red arrows at the top and to the right on this slide are the indicators of the completion status. All sections must be completed to submit the application. Today, we will be focusing only on the program-specific forms since it is the most thorough part of the NIT application. To begin the program-specific information section, click the update link where the bottom arrow is on this screen. From this overview, you can see the requirements for the program-specific information. Notice the side navigation menu. To return to the NAT status overview menu, you can click the complete status link at any time as this navigation menu will remain on each page of the application. To begin table one, click the update link where indicated below by the red arrow. The fields grayed out are not capable of being edited because the data for these columns are for graduates beyond 12 months of study, whereas the corresponding rows apply to students in their first 12 months of study. Students should not be counted as both an enrollee and a graduate. It is important that applicants understand the difference between the Save and the Save and Continue buttons at the bottom of this page as these options are on every page of the application. The Save button will save the page and will not navigate away from it. If the former table is complete when the Save button is selected, then the status will change to Complete. If the former table is not complete when the Save button is selected, then error messages will appear indicating which fields must be filled in or corrected before the section can be marked as complete. If the Save and Continue button is selected, it will save the information on the current page and will take you to the next page. You will be able to see if the previous page was completed or not by checking a green status message that will appear at the top of this next page. It will advise whether the previous page was completed or remains in progress, which would indicate it was not completed. All applicant institutions requesting the statutory funding preference must complete this table, which will be used to determine if the applicant has met the statutory funding preference. Item 2, total number of graduates, will be pre-populated with a total value entered into Table 1. On this table, it is acceptable for fields to be left blank rather than entering a zero. If the field is left blank, the system will interpret this as a value of zero. The instructions for the previous slide, Table 2, Part A, 
are applicable to this table as well. The difference here is the data. This table is relative to data for graduates supported by traineeship. Again, all applicant institutions requesting the statutory funding preference must complete this table, which will be used to determine if the applicant has met the statutory funding preference. The data from Table 1 section of this table will be pre-populated. Once a selection is made for the ethnicity data, click the Confirm button. Based on the selection made, particular fields at the bottom of the table will become editable. Enrollees, students supported, graduates, and graduates supported are the total numbers from Table 1 separated and reported as Hispanic Latino and non-Hispanic non-Latino. If your institution does not track this data or you do not know the ethnicity of a student, include those numbers in the unreported, unavailable column. This table is for Hispanic Latino ethnicity data only. The totals entered into the bottom of this table must match the totals from the Hispanic Latino ethnicity data displayed at the top of the table. These related fields are boxed in red on this screen. A glossary of information is available on this page to clarify the acronyms used to abbreviate race information. If a field is left blank, it will be counted as zero. Part B is for non-Hispanic, non-Latino ethnicity data only. The same rules that were applicable to Part A are also applicable to this table as it too relates to the race disadvantaged data. Part C is for unreported, unavailable ethnicity data only. Once again, the same rules that were applicable to Parts A and B are also applicable to this table as it too relates to the race disadvantaged data. The totals entered into this table must match the data from Table 1 totals. Count each student only once. Do not double count a student as both an enrollee and a graduate. If data is not collected by age and gender, include data in the appropriate unreported available section at the bottom of the table. This slide provides information on how applicants can review the completed program-specific information tables and forms. Users can view the forms in an HTML format, print the sections individually, or print all forms. The Table of Content drop-down menu allows users to jump to a particular section of the program-specific forms to review in a read-only mode. To review the face page of the application with a general overview of the NAT application, please click on the Complete Status link in the left side menu. This concludes the overview of the program-specific information portion of the NAT application. I would like to hand the presentation back over to Karen. Thank you, Brad. At this time, we will open up the webinar for your questions. Please include your name and organization when asking a question via the chat functionality. First question. Will NAT remain an annual program? Yes, the Nurse and Anesthetist Traineeship Program will remain an annual formula-based program for fiscal year 2012. Will there still be two application phases for the NAT program? Yes, the NAT program will still accept applications in two phases. Phase one is grants.gov. And phase two is the HRSA Electronic Handbook. Who is eligible for the NAT traineeship? The Nurse and Anesthetist Traineeship Program is eligible for schools that provide traineeships for students in Nurse and Anesthetist Traineeship Programs. For fiscal year 2012, we will support both first year and beyond the 12 months of study nurse anesthesia students. How can NAT funds be used? The nurse and ethicist traineeship funds are used for full or partial tuition, reasonable living expenses, stipends, required books, and fees of the program. How are the stipend amounts determined for students? The stipend amounts are $22,000 for full-time students, and the nurse and ethicist traineeship program only has full-time students. As there are no additional questions, this concludes the question and answer segment of the webinar. Slide 30 contains my contact information if you have any additional questions after the webinar. On behalf of the HRSA Division of Nursing, we thank you for your participation in today's NAT webinar. Webinar archive information will be distributed to applicants 
participants via email communication. This now concludes the Nurse Anesthetist Traineeship Webinar. We will wait for additional questions prior to concluding the webinar so you have time to submit your questions. Remember to include your full name and the organization. Thank you. We'll, we'll await questions via the chat functionality. We will now answer the questions that you have submitted via the chat functionality. Angie, Angie Johnson would like to know, will these slides be available after the webinar? 
Yes, the webinar presentation material will be provided to the, the participants after the webinar. Eileen Ivania would like to know, what do you do regarding attrition rates? Regarding attrition rates, I'll check into that question and, and get back to you with a response. So if you can send me an email, I'll get back to you with that response. Thank you. Also, there is not a table for attrition rates. Sometimes the numbers don't add up. With attrition rates, you might be referring to the BHPR performance measures. So if you can send me an email or call me after the webinar, and I can respond to your question and get more detailed information as to what you're referring to regarding attrition rate. This is from Joseph Jenas. It is my understanding that all registrants to the webinar will get a transcript of the webinar and the questions asked and answered. Is that correct? Yes. Lynn Liebeck, what are the outcome measures for the NAT? The draft performance measures information was emailed, and if you need a copy of the draft emails, I will get that to you. Also, the final measures are still in the approval process, and once they're finalized, we will distribute the final measures. Jim Closer, if you can't locate the grant in the EHB, how do I load it slash locate it? I have completed phase one. Dr. Closure, I will respond to your message after the call and walk you through how to upload it in the HRSA electronic handbook. Laura Wright from University of Alabama at Birmingham. During July 1, 2010 and June 1, 2011, who was considered supported? Those who received funding during that year only? Traineeship supported are those students who are supported with nurse and ethicist traineeship funds during the reported reporting period indicated on those tables, on the applicable table. Susan Johansson, what dollar amount should be put in phase one? In phase one, you may enter your estimated budget amount. Please note that this is a formula-based program. So the dollar amount that you enter will not be a factor in, in the award uh, the award calculation. Brian Mears from Walford College, Naples, Florida. Regarding Form SF424, Block 12, proposed project date, is that the government fiscal year, October 1 through September 30th? Proposed project date. Enter the project start date of the project in the start date field. And the project start date is July 1. Christine Collage. If we have a two-year program, should we be asking for support for both first-year and second-year students since support has been extended to first-year students as well? Yes. For fiscal year 2012, the Nurse and Ethicist Traineeship Program will now support students in the first year as well as students beyond the first 12 months of study. So you will submit only a Nurse and Ethicist Traineeship application to support the nurse anesthesia students. You will no longer support an advanced education nursing traineeship application for your first year student. The nurse anesthesia students are all under the nurse and ethicist traineeship program. Rebecca Gomkoto, where are the, web the other webinars archived? The webinar for the nurse faculty loan program will be held on October, will be held on March the 21st, 2012 and the webinar for Advanced Education Nursing Traineeship will be held on March 29, 2012. So they have not occurred at this date. Lynn Liebeck, what are the outcome measures for the NAT? The outcome measures for the NAT program, the final outcome measures are still in the approval process. And once finalized, we will distribute the information. If you need a copy of the draft measures, please email me, and I will ensure that you receive a copy of those draft measures. Linda Hill, what is the deadline for application submission? The application is in two phases. Phase one is in grants.gov, and that is due on March 29, 2012. 
applicants who successfully submit an application in phase one may submit in phase two, which is due in the HRSA electronic handbook on April 10, 2012. Kathleen Schultz, Harding University. For programs under development and moving forward accreditation, will a grant proposal be considered? Please reference the funding opportunity announcement for the accreditation detailed information. The accreditation documentation must be submitted with the application when it when it is submitted to the app to the to HRSA for funding. Also, new there are requirements for new schools regarding accreditation, and that is detailed in the funding opportunity announcement. Joseph Jenna, will a transcript of the question and answers be emailed to all participants? We will email the attendees on how to obtain the archived webinar in a few days. Eileen Ivania, which address do we need for graduates serving in HPSA and rural underserved? Is it the address of the institution they are working at? Please email me your question and I will provide you additional information on that once I receive clarity as to your question. Thank you. Lisa Mall from Minneapolis School of Anesthesia. What other data will we need to be reported after receiving NAT funds? Additional data for 2012, NAT applicants will be required to submit performance measures. And that is a new reporting requirement for the nursing ethics traineeship program. Jennifer Chamberlain, how can I access the slides already presented? I just joined. To reiterate, we will email the attendees on how to obtain the archived webinar in a few days. Catherine White, our program transitioned to the DNP framework three years ago. I do not have a graduating class for this year. How do I indicate this on the application? You may do so in the project narrative. Michelle Hills, National University. Can the creator and the AO be the same person, or must they be two different people? They may be the same person. You can have a project director and an authorizing official. However, some schools only have a project director who also acts as the authorizing official. But they could be the same. We prefer to have a project officer as well as an authorizing official, but they can be the same. Christine Kulach, where can we find information on HIPSA areas? The information on the health professional shortage areas is listed in the funding opportunity announcement. Henry Talley, does this include students that begin the term in January? While part of the academic year, they were not here in October. The students must be reported during the time frame that's indicated on the NAT table. Gwendolyn Foss, my invitation said 1 o'clock to 3 p.m. When I logged in after 1 o'clock, you were almost done. What happened? The Nurse and Ethics Traineeship Program webinar was from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time today. We started the call at 1.01 p.m. If you need the webinar information, the archive information will be available to attendees in a few days. You may also contact me if you have questions while you are preparing your application. Millie Prado, if we have submitted our Phase 1 application already, is our Phase 2 application avail available now in the EHB? The phase two application is available in EHVs uh, after the uh, the first uh, tier has been submitted. Deborah Work, 
You mentioned a deadline of March 29th. Is that for Phase 1 grants.gov portion or the Phase 2 portion under EHB? The Phase 1 portion in grants.gov is due on March 29, 2012. Eileen Ivania, Columbia University. Does the cost of tuition account for any portion of reimbursement in grant allowance? or do you take the money and divide among the numbers of students in the program? The Nurse and Methodist Traineeship Grant Award is based on a formula amount. And once the, the award is given to the school, the schools disperse the money to the eligible students. Lorreen Pagan, where can we find information on sites designated as ambulatory practice sites designated by state governors? For medically underserved communities, as well as for health professional shortage areas, there's links in the funding opportunity announcement. After the webinar, you may send me an email, and I can show you, direct you to where that information is in the funding opportunity announcement. Henry Talley, can we use the students that start in January as part of this number? If the students that start in January are in the program during the reporting period, then yes, you can use them. Deborah Work, do you have an anticipated amount per NAT student recipient based on the funding amount stated in the grants.gov offering of 100 awards for a total of $2.25 million? At this time, we do not. Christine Kulach. The performance measures that will be due annually on August 30th, does this begin with the 11-12 funding year or start with the 12-13 funding year? The performance measures for NAT will be new for 2012. Funding. July. For People who are submitting the application for fiscal year 2012, you will uh, receive your award in July 1st, 2012, around July 1st, 2012. Therefore, you will not have to report on the performance measures until July, August time frame, 2013. For those, for those who are presently funded, you will have to submit the performance measures uh, report this, this summer July, August, 2012. Henry Talley, can we use the number of students for academic year since we begin in January instead of August or September? In the funding opportunity announcement on page two under appointment of trainees, it indicates in item two, a trainee may be appointed at the beginning of any academic period including a summer session which falls within the budget period specified by the current notice of award. Millie Prado, Florida Hospital College of Health Sciences. If we meet both the statutory funding preference and the special consideration, can we request both in our submission? Yes, the statutory funding preference, you can plead NAT Table 2A. For special consideration, you complete the special consideration assurance statement. Jennifer Chamberlain, please repeat the dates for the AENT technical assistance webinar. Do you know when that FOA will be released? The Advanced Education Nursing Traineeship webinar will be held on March 29, 2012. The funding opportunity at this time is in the approval process. And, we, and will be released as soon as it becomes available. Henry Talley, can we use the number of students for the academic year since we began in January instead of August or September? Yes, please reference the appointment of trainees information on page two of the NAC. Groom. Can you please show the slide that shows your contact information? 
Yes, the slide slide thirty is shown for your information as requested. Michelle Hill, National University, for newly established and accredited MS nurse anesthetist program. How do we approach the program specific form section since no data exists for seven one ten through six thirty twenty eleven? The reporting requirements are new for all programs. After the call, I will, will respond directly to you regarding your new program. If you send me an email, thank you. Christine Coulage, I am clarifying my previous question. For August 30th, 2012, we will be required to report the HPR performance measures, or is this the first date we are required to report going to be August 30th, 2013 for the 2013 award year? For applicants who are submitting an application for the Nurse and Necessary Traineeship Program for fiscal year 2012, you will not have to report the performance measures for BHPR on the Nurse Anesthetist Traineeship Program until 2013. For those who are on the call who may be presently funded, in other words, you received funding in fiscal year 2012, 2011, excuse me, you will need to report this summer, July, August 2012. We will wait for an additional five minutes so that you, the participant, may ask any additional questions via the chat functionality. Please note that phase two, the HRSA EHBs will be available 48 hours after the phase one submission, and only applicants who successfully submit applications in phase one, grants.gov, by the due date, may submit the continuing application in phase two, the HRSA EHBs. Jennifer Chamberlain, do you have any additional guidance other than what is in the FOA on what should be included in the maintenance effort calculation? At this time, the only guidance that we have is the information that's featured in the NAT funding opportunity announcement for the maintenance of effort. <laughs>
and mirrors. On Form SF-424, Block 20, free application attachments, could you explain what attachments are required? Item 20, pre application attachments, is not required for the NAT program. Brian Mears, could you explain what attachments are required? Attachments required are attachment one, the NAT full-time status, tuition fees and stipend form, the accreditation and the accreditation documentation. And the NAT program specific forms in the HRSA EHBs are the NAT tables, tables one through five. Laura writes, on table one, the last column projected students by 10-15-2011, is that an error or are you looking for projected students by 2012? 2012.
Kathy Cook. Is there a template for the biographical bio sketch of the PD? If so, where is it? The project director information is on page 13, where it indicates attach the 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 project the project director information. There's no uh, template per se for the bio sketch. There is information as to the what we're looking for for a biographical sketch. On page 12, there's a staffing plan and personnel requirement that you submit in the HRSA Electronic Handbook. Applicants must provide a biographical sketch for the project director that will be assigned to the project. You will include this as attachment three in the HRSA Electronic Handbook. We don't have a template. You can submit your biographical sketch. We will need your education, your criteria, and your work experience. On behalf of the HRSA Division of Nursing, we thank you for your participation in today's webinar. Webinar archive information. We have an additional question. Did you say that nurse anesthesia students can no longer be supported by the Advanced Education Nursing Traineeship Program? For fiscal year 2012, the Advanced Education Nursing Traineeship Program will support primary care nurse practitioner and nurse midwifery programs only. The Nurse Anesthetist Traineeship Program will support the nurse anesthesia students in the first 12 months and beyond the 12 months of study. So the, the response to your question is yes, the nurse anesthesia students are no longer supported under the Advanced Education Nursing Traineeship Program. No questions at the at the conclusion. This is the conclusion of the webinar. If you have additional questions, I am available via telephone as well as email communication. My contact information is on slide 30. Thank you all for your participation. I am Karen Breeden. I appreciate it. Have a good day. This now concludes the NAT webinar.